Hello, my name is Joe Perillo. I'm the Education Manager for Nobel Procera with Nobel BioCare. What I'm here for today is I'd like to take you through the development of a new bar that we've introduced into the market. Most of you might know what's known as a wraparound bar. The wraparound bar is the most popular bar within Nobel BioCare's armamentarium for an overdenture bar. And being the most popular bar, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce to you a new bar just like the wraparound bar, but it's gonna give you more versatility in design and supply a better product to your doctors. And in turn, they will give your patients a better quality of life. This is the first new feature. It's called the anterior region definition. By clicking on this, what it's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us then to place different types of support mechanisms along the top surface of this bar. And as we do that, we can decide, do we want to reference the denture on here? Would we like to reference what's known as an intaglio? Or would we like to just go through a direct bar proposal? And I think the easiest way to explain this today would be going through a bar proposal. So let's click on our bar proposal choice. And you can see that the software automatically starts setting up the alignment for you. So what we're going to do is decide how far do we want to affect this bar. So on this one, we're going to take it from the beginning of the first bicuspid on both sides of the arch. And you'll also notice there are three blue handles on the anterior portion of our bar. These are going to be the beginning handles of forming the shape of the bar. So the effectiveness of these handles is that we can click on them and we can drag them to wherever we'd like. So if I want handles behind each of these teeth, I can add extra handles as well just by clicking in those positions. So let's add handles behind each one of these teeth in the anterior region and start forming our bar. I'm going to put one here, we're going to put one in the interproximal, and then one behind every surface of the tooth on here. So in the interproximals and the tooth surface itself. Looking directly at the handle and the facial position of the tooth, we can start raising the areas to where we would like some more support under each one of these teeth. There we are. Pull this one over a little bit. And we're just going to keep sliding around and create more support for this bar in every possible position. There we are. So now when you look at this bar, you can tell we've created more support up underneath those denture teeth. Looking at the bar from this position here, I can see I'm high here or I'm high in this position. Well, let's bring it down a little bit. Notice we're at a millimeter offset right now. Let's take that out of there and reduce that by a millimeter. Bring it down to zero and watch what happens to our bar now. We've just clicked on it and now we've brought these positions down a full millimeter in position on here. So last but not least, what we're gonna do with this bar here is we're gonna show you some of the retentive elements. Come right down to our bar here. And we're gonna start clicking on the bar. Now, if you notice in your 2D cross-sectional viewer down here, as I place my cursor on the bar, I can see the red dot. That red dot is giving me my positioning because our retentive elements are going to place themselves perpendicular to the bar surface. So I will place one here place another one here. When we get the red halo, it tells us that we're just a little too close to one another. If I want to adapt to the ridge, I'm going to pull this down to demonstrate. We're going to pull it right down to the ridge here. We're going to pull it down over here, and we're going to pull it down in this area here. If you'll notice, we are penetrating into the ridge right now in this area. So let's go ahead and close our retention element drawer, and let's go ahead and open up the bar parameters drawer again. Down at the bottom, you have a fit to gum feature in here. So what it does is it takes the bar and fits it directly to the soft tissue. If we act, if we change this to an adapt fit to bar or fit bar to gum feature and activate the feature, notice what happens. The bar will contour itself to the ridge. And if we want to adjust how far off the ridge we are, we have a distance to gum here. Right now we're one millimeter. Let's bring it down, say, to a half millimeter. So we'll come in, we'll change that to a 0.5, and from there, click. And what we're gonna do is see the bar drop then. Now, that's if you want to adapt to the ridge and maybe make some good tissue compression in the maxilla. Now, if we want to keep convexity and natural cleansing to the bar, all we do is we come back now, we hit the drop-down menu, and we change it to what's known as preserve. 
This is what everybody's been waiting for. And now you have the bar has taken itself and it's changed its contours and it's taken the closest point to the ridge and it's made everything convex now. What that means to your patients, your doctors, is that there's no longer an area underneath this bar that is concaved where food can trap itself. It's now a natural cleansing ability and if the acrylic is followed in the same manner in the shape of the bar, we're now gonna be able to keep that natural cleansing ability for the patient, for the doctor, and everybody involved. This is a better quality of life for the patient, the doctors, and the laboratories working with this bar.